Hello guys, today we're taking a look at the fixture profile creation software for the Wi-Fly Any1. This software allows you to either customize already made profiles or create brand new fixture profiles from scratch to use any of your lighting fixtures with the Wi-Fly Any1. On the Any1, make sure you're running firmware version 1.2 or later, which allows you to access some of the new features in the fixture profile creation software. And if you're watching this video far into the future, I recommend you load up the latest version of firmware and download the latest fixture profile creation software. To get the software, visit the Any1 page on the American DJ website, and in the download section, we have the profile creator software. Currently, the software is only available for Windows. Go ahead and download the file and install the software. So someone who is new to DMX, this all may look a bit daunting, but don't worry, it's actually very simple. First, I recommend you go watch this video here, where I go through the basics of DMX and how it works. So each channel of your lighting fixture controls a particular attribute, and usually a fader on a lighting desk or lighting software will say from 0 to 100%. However, with DMX protocol, any channel can have a value between 0 and 255. If you look in the instruction manual for your light, under the DMX channels, you'll see that the different colors, gobos, or macros are broken up into values ranging between 0 and 255. Now you'll need to use these values to tell the anyone how your fixture is controlled. When opening the profile creator for the first time, I recommend you go ahead and open an already made profile. You can download new profiles from the American DJ website, but personally I recommend going to the Wi-Fi Anyone Facebook group, where you can download loads of fixture profiles for various different lights. So we're going to go ahead and open an already made profile by pressing the open button. And on the desktop here, I have two different files. I've got the inner pocket wash in 11 channel mode and the inner spot pro in 14 channels. So first let's open up the inner spot pro. The way the software works is it's broken up into different tabs here. You've got four main tabs. We're currently in the fixture properties tab. Underneath you have the fixture name and also the number of channels of your fixture. You can use the up and down arrows to add channels up to 36 channels on a single fixture. Now underneath here we can see we have a table showing us what each channel of the fixture is doing. You've got your channel numbers followed by the attribute or trait here, then a label for the channel and a default value. When you click on the drop down here you'll see we've got loads of different attributes to choose from for your lighting fixtures. And this allows you to tell the anyone what each channel is actually doing. The label is just the label you'll get on the anyone for what the channel is doing. And then you have the default value, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's the value the fixture will go to when it's in its default position or color or gobo. And you can change this value here by entering a number between 0 and 255. One of the new options in the new version is with the shutter and strobe channels. You'll see instead of having a box here, we have a button. We can go ahead and press that and it allows us to set the minimum and maximum values as well as the default. This allows you to set the minimum strobe value and the maximum strobe value for your fixture, so when you use that strobe fader, when it's at the bottom, it'll be its slowest strobe, and when it's at the top, it'll be its fastest strobe. Now with a lot of fixture profiles at the moment, when you move that strobe fader around, you'll find that it also goes through other different modes like dimmer pulses and full shutter open. So this allows you to customize your fixture profile so that the light will only be strobing when you use that fader and the strobe button. So now let's move on to some more tabs here. We're going to go to this tab, RGB WAUV, which stands for red, green, blue, white, amber, and ultraviolet. Now, of course, with the InnerSpot Pro, we don't have any kind of color mixing on this fixture. So I'm going to go ahead and open the inner pocket wash. Along the top here, you have the different color channels for your light. We can see here that we've got a red channel, a green channel, a blue channel, and a white channel. And we've also got the amber and ultraviolet channels here, which this fixture doesn't use. And we've got even more columns here with the number two next to them and the number three and four. This is basically if your fixture has multiple different pixels. Say you've got an LED bar that's broken up into four different color segments. You can customize the color on each individual segment. Now the different rows here correspond to the different buttons on the color page of the Any1. So you've got 12 different buttons on the Any1, and if you use the encoder you can scroll to the second page, where you'll get another 12 buttons all the way up to 24. So what you can do here is you can basically color mix using the values between 0 and 255 for each channel. So if I wanted my first color button on the Any1 to control red, I set the red channel here to the maximum, which is 255, and then green, blue, and white are all set to the minimum values here. 
and by adding various different values for different colors, you can basically assign any color you want to any of your color buttons. The next column here is for the CMY and color wheel. Now I'm gonna go ahead and reopen up the InnoSpot Pro. On the left here we have CMY, and CMY is a color mixing system you'll get on more professional lighting fixtures. However, on the right here we have the color wheel. We can see here channel five corresponds to color wheel one. And if we go back to fixture properties here, channel five is our color channel. So again, it works in exactly the same way as we did the color mixing on this tab. Here we have all of the different buttons for the various different colors on your fixture. So you can now go ahead and assign each different color button on the any one to a value between zero and 255, which corresponds to a particular color on the color wheel. You'll be able to see which values correspond to which color in the instruction manual for your fixture. The final tab here is gobo-show tab. On the left here, we have all of our different values for our various gobos in the fixture, and it works exactly the same way as with the CMY color wheel. Here are our various gobo buttons, and here is the column for our gobo channel. You'll have additional channels here if you've got fixtures with multiple gobo wheels. And again, it's the same here. We've got values between zero and 255, corresponding to the different gobos in the lighting fixture. Finally, we have our show mode here, and we only have one page, so we only have 12 different rows. Now, if your fixture has, say, a channel for different color macros or different show macros, you can go ahead and assign the different buttons here to different values on the show mode channel. So we can see here channel 14 is show one. If we go back to fixed properties, channel 14 is a show channel or a show attribute. So we can go ahead using the manual again, pick out the different values that correspond to the different macros or different built-in shows and assign them to the different buttons. Once you're finished, you can go ahead and either save, which will overwrite the fixture profile you've already opened, or you can save fixture as, which will create a brand new profile. It may look a bit complicated, but it's actually really simple. It's just a case of going through the manual for your lighting fixture and inputting all of the different values between zero and 255 for all the different attributes of your lighting fixture. That way the anyone can understand what you mean when you press color button three or color button seven and know the difference between gobo slot one and gobo slot two. So that's a simple look at the layout of the fixture profile creator software. I'll have another video coming soon where I'll go through the process of creating a fixture profile from scratch and show you just how easy it is to completely customize and edit your fixture profiles. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thanks for watching.